I normally do a lot of videos about audio stuff, but uh, being a tech channel, I wanted to diversify a little bit and get into something a little different as well. And today I actually have an Olympus D600L camera. Now this was one of the first digital cameras that, not the first digital camera, but one that you could actually maybe make the case to afford in the late 90s when things were changing. Before that, people had digital cameras, sure, but that was usually for people in a certain industry that needed them. But this was when consumers were able to kind of afford one. As a matter of fact, I even have the box here, and this one was sold for $999. And believe it or not, this is not something I got off of eBay. This was my mom's camera. She actually bought the digital camera back in the late 90s. Uh, I think 98, 99 is what I kind of remember. And uh, this was, again, when people were kind of making the jump from film to digital. So I thought today I could do some demos and see what it looks like. Obviously, I'm going to lower my expectations on what a 1.4 megapixel camera is going to do. But I thought it would be fun. So this video is about the D600L from Olympus. At the time, Olympus was one of the more successful traditional film-based camera manufacturers that made the transition to digital. With the introduction of the D600L, though, Olympus had substantially raised the bar for the entire category of digital point-and-shoot cameras. They offered high image resolution, excellent optics, convenient usage, and single-lens reflex viewing at prices near $1,000. I feel I'm going to be saying, at the time, a lot throughout this video. I'll try not to. Anyway, the excellent resolution at the time, and image quality found at a reasonable price, also at the time, is because of the innovation of being a true single-lens reflex SLR device, which offered through-the-lens viewing, which of course means that when you look through the optical viewfinder, you are actually looking through the main lens of the camera and can see exactly what the sensor will see when you take a shot. The D600L produces a 1280 by 1024 image at its highest quality. To accommodate situations in which you might not need all of that resolution, perhaps you like postage stamp size pictures. It also includes a low res capture mode with image sizes at 640 by 512. The D600L also includes a 1.8 inch LCD panel on the back of the camera, but you cannot use it as a viewfinder, so it's really just for image review only. The LCD panel does work well for reviewing images once they are captured and selectively deleting those you don't want to keep. Here's some literature I found online about the LCD display, and it states, To help you rapidly review a number of images, you can display as many as nine images in thumbnail form simultaneously on the LCD screen. Also, after taking a picture, a copy of the new image appears on the LCD panel for a few seconds. This automatic instant review is very helpful for making certain you actually got the shot you were trying for. And it's nice not to have to press multiple buttons or change camera modes to be able to see it. As far as the lens is concerned, the D600L has a multi-coated aspheric 3x autofocus zoom lens, and the zoom covers a range equivalent from 36 to 110 millimeters, and the lens also has an f-stop range from 2.8 to 11. This camera stores images on SSFDC smart media cards, and at the time, these cards were exceptionally compact, not much bigger than a large postage stamp, and came with a whopping 4 megabyte card, but could accept any smart media card up to a mind-blowing 8 megabyte maximum. Which means this camera can store between 3 and 50 images on a 4 megabyte card, depending on image quality selected, and are stored in JPEG format. Okay, so with all that out of the way, I am going to take some test shots outside. Uh, but first, I'm going to clean this camera because I do want to give it the best possible chance. So I'm going to do some simple lens cleaning and fresh batteries and do everything I can to give this thing a fair shake. So before I started assembling this video, I went outside to take some fresh pictures. Now my goal was to get lots of colors, things with water, uh, you saw the pepper plants there a second ago, and I also was taking a picture of a really bright orange hose. So when I started to assemble the video, I went to download the pictures onto my computer, and then I noticed I got a card error out of the camera. Now at first I thought, well, maybe it's just the camera, and maybe I just need to put it in a card reader. And I had an old card reader, 
and that didn't work. So I contacted a friend of mine who had some old media. He let me borrow his. I also couldn't get the card to work. I even went so far as to buy another card on eBay for cheap, and that didn't work either. So at this point, I cannot get the pictures out of the card, even if they're not corrupt, because the camera itself and or the card do not work. So in an effort to salvage this video, I went back through my old pictures archives on my hard drive, and I essentially went back to the very top, the very earliest photos I had that I knew were taken on this, and I tried to find something that I had a picture of then that I would have still today that I can kind of compare them. And this is the best I could come up with. Let me show you. This picture here is from 1999, and it is from an art exhibit that my mom attended, and she had submitted some tile artwork that she did and had a booth. And I want you to focus in here on these tiles. Now, let me go to picture number two. So what she was doing was she was painting on the tiles, and this here is like the source tile. And then you can kind of see in the background she was having prints made and then having them framed, and then the mat that would go over them she would paint over top of to kind of complete the edge of the tile. And so I actually have one of these prints, and this is what it looks like. I took this picture on an iPhone 12, and I didn't do anything in Photoshop other than just kind of clean up the edges and make them straight. So there was no actual color correction. This is just straight out of the phone itself. So let me crop in on the tile part, and let's compare this one to the picture taken on the D600L. So there should be no surprise here. Obviously, the biggest advancement in uh, digital photography, of course, is the clarity and detail of pictures. Now, I do want to give some credit here to the D600L regarding color. Now, the source tile was hand-painted and is actually quite vibrant. Uh, the print that my mom got, now, there was probably a step down in the reproduction of that, number one. And then number two, this has been hanging on a wall in my house, so it, maybe it wasn't done on archival paper, and that kind of, uh, looking at it here, looks a little bit yellow. So I'm going to give a little bit of credit here to that D600L's color. While it lacks, obviously, detail and clarity, I think the colors were actually pretty accurate. Now, unfortunately, this was not taken on the highest resolution possible with the camera. Uh, it looks like this was like the medium resolution of 144 pixels per inch. That was a 640 by 512. Uh, but still, I mean, I still think it was a decent picture for 1990s technology. So unfortunately, that's about all I can demo when it comes to pictures. While I do wish I could have taken new pics on the highest quality and really given it a proper test, I don't think I would have gotten any surprising results from the new ones. So I think the old pics are a pretty accurate representation of what this camera could do at the time. Part of me wonders what it would be like if you could keep some of the physical elements that are not tied to technological advancement, like the lens, zoom, and viewfinder, and swap out the sensor to make use of new tech with quality classic components, because I think this was a quality consumer grade camera. But it is what it is, and I'm glad my mom still had it packed away in a closet for me to find after all these years. If you like what you watched, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.